hello hello everyone now i didn't bother featuring the salem because it's basically a clone of the des moines however wargaming has re recently announced that they will be changing the salem significantly it's going to get a shorter range radar and a better heal instead so i figured i'd use this commentary as an example of how to play the des moines uh, the matchmaking is heavily tier 10 focused of course not surprisingly i tell my team you guys go to b we'll go to a we have an excellent a spawn for three man division so the idea is here we go to a lock it down my team goes to b we win the game based on holding two caps that's of course the initial plan uh, however you can already tell that half my team doesn't listen to a word i say and start following us towards a so that's obviously a bad thing. Now, the Salem is the upcoming tier 10, basically Des Moines clone. As of now, it's a clone. They intend to change it, though, as I mentioned. But right now, the differences are very small. The Salem has 49.7k HP. Uh, the Des Moines has 50.4. That's a 700 HP difference. Um, it doesn't have Des Moines short range AA at all. It lacks it completely. But the Moin short range AA is probably the single most useless AA it has. Uh, it has almost no actual impact on gameplay and uh, losing it isn't really a big deal. Especially since in, in return you gain DD damage control, which means you're if you run the premium damage control, you have a 40 second cooldown on your repair instead of the usual 60 second cooldown uh, that a normal Des Moines has. Uh, also worth noting, I'm not running the radar a duration module because I don't have one to spare and I couldn't be arsed demounting one just to play uh, the Salem so this is basically the gameplay you can expect of not having this module at all um basic Des Moines gameplay though I'm gonna as I mentioned I'm gonna use this as a Des Moines example because right as of right now it's almost identical to the Des Moines I push into the cap I instant I get spotted so of course I radar and the first thing you notice is a Shimakaza, and you start landing shells on him. Note the position I have put myself in, I am parking behind the island. Um, that's something you want to do very often with a Des Moines. Des Moines excels uh, behind any sort of cover, because if there's cover available, you can hide your ship uh, behind it, and usually you can use these extremely slow shells to lob over various objects. You do not want to play in the open in the Des Moines. Late game? That's an option. Early game, that's just stupid because you don't have the armor like a Moskva to tank in the open and any sort of playing in the open will get you heavily punished for very little return. So first things first, find a good position and use it. In this case, I'm of course contesting a cap and radaring the enemy. So this is giving me a very good advantage. We're also putting enough pressure here. You can see the Des Moines or Salem, incredible DPM, forcing this Bismarck to turn away, and we will most likely secure this cap. Sadly though, my team didn't listen to a word I said, and instead of pushing B, they're lemming training behind us to A. So this, I can already tell, this is going to be a very hard game, mostly because my team decided to, well, not be very intelligent. That such things happen though. You note at this point I'm undetected but still able to shoot without any sort of smoke cover or anything similar. I'm actually being smoked up now by my teammate, but honestly I was kind of undetected to begin with. So it probably doesn't have too much of an impact because the position I was in already allowed me to stay undetected. I am raining down HE on any targets I can reach and basically forcing them to turn away. Now ideally if my team was sitting around B, they would be able to punish all these people who are now turning away and giving broadside. But since they've all sailed with us to A... Uh, there's very little punishing going on and these guys are basically just fleeing from us, which is very unfortunate. Now, when you play the Des Moines, you have to understand the role of the Des Moines. This applies to both Clan Wars and Randoms. Des Moines is a ship that locks down positions. Uh, it's a ship you put somewhere where you want it to stop the enemy. It's not a ship that's particularly good at pushing. It's not a ship that's particularly good at kiting either, but it's the ship you put into a position and the enemy, if they want to push that position, they have to deal with the Des Moines. And, for example, in Clan Wars, this kind of uh, this usually means they have to trade to get rid of it. And pushing into a stationary Des Moines will almost always result in an unfavorable trade for the attacker. Because the Des Moines has so much firepower, and especially if you push in close range, uh, which is often the case with these capture points, you have to push around islands to be able to uh, contest the cap, and you have to fight the Des Moines at the same time. And the Des Moines, huge fire rate and incredibly powerful AP, especially with since uh, you have US AP, which have extra generous penetration angles, meaning your AP can penetrate from angles you normally would not expect to. 
um, it means that pushing into a Des Moines usually leads to very unfavorable trades. And that's of course what you want to exploit both in randoms and in clan wars. In this case I parked down at A because I wanted, if, if the enemy team wanted to come to A, they had to push through me. They had to push through my firepower. That was of course the initial idea but then my entire team decided to come down here and now it's less of a case of pushing through me and more of a case of pushing through my entire team. But the problem is, if your team does what my team does here, um, you kind of lose a lot of value from the Des Moines because the whole point is of course of locking down a position you have a small you have a small force on one side of the map that locks down a position this is what you do in clan wars as well you have a Des Moines on one side of the map and he can lock down a position for your team um, meanwhile the rest of the team pushes somewhere else however when your entire team follows you like they do here they all follow me to a the value the value that this anchor type of ship like the Des Moines has, the value it has drops greatly because I'm no long, they're no longer trying to push into me. They are no longer uh, being repelled by this anchor force that I represent. Instead, they're just kiting away. And when you have to chase, you lose a lot of value. Especially you can see the firing arcs. At long range, I run the range mode on the Des Moines. It's something I recommend on it, both for randoms and for clan wars. Um, reload mode can work for clan wars. Uh, it might, can work for randoms as well, but I think it limits you a bit too much um, Especially if you happen to find someone who's in a bad position and it's easier to exploit that With the range mode since you have well you have the range to actually fire upon him so Trying to chase and deal damage Not very successful because it's quite hard to land these shells because the shell travel time as you can see this guy is only 16 16.6 came away but the shell travel time is 11 and a half seconds only when he gets close as soon as he gets even a bit closer you can see how drastically the shell travel time drops so being forced to play at long ranges doesn't really fit the ship too well unless of course they're pushing right into you my team who tried to push around this a corner they of course all got killed they're pushing into double dds and they're pushing into the entire enemy force and because we no longer have any force at b the enemy force can just focus on anyone who pushes around this corner and farm them so at this point we are in huge trouble um the enemy has 730 points they have a capture advantage. We are 8 versus 12. A third of our team has died. And we have gotten no kills. At this point, I've even said uh, entire team follow us to A. GG. Uh, I'm not, of course, I'm, of, that doesn't mean I'm going to call it. Like, I'm going to give up here. Um, it's just that my team has managed to make this game so much harder for us than it needed to be. If they had followed the instructions at the start, this would have been a significantly easier game. But because they all decided the lemming train behind us, uh, the game has become extremely challenging. My two division mates already left A and they're trying to push and have an influence around B in the middle between A and B so that we can get some sort of crossfire going. In the meantime though, I know I have to do something at this point. Uh, I've done 90, 89k damage, I've locked down A for our team, but we are down four ships and we don't have map control. I need to make something happen. So I start slowly pushing up because I see especially since a Fried de Grosse is pushing around the corner Fried de Grosse has 406 mm guns or 420. This means when you yourself in the Des Moines or Salem has 27 mm armor, if we take 14.3 times 27, we get 386 mm, which means that anything bigger, larger than 386 mm will overmatch our bow. That's of course why I'm angling the way I am, because I know his guns can overmatch my armor. I'm trying to bait him into shooting more of my broadside instead of shooting my nose, because if his shells hit my nose, he will overmatch it and he will probably sit that me quite easily. So I'm constantly changing course and angling and trying to make it hard for him to hit my nose. I'm also of course reversing at this point because there were torps coming my way and I know there's DDs there. So I'm seeing if I could bait someone in and the Shima gets very uh, excited to rush me down and kill me. But his timing is pretty bad since my not only was I expecting it, so I was already reversing. I also have a teammate showing up. Note that when you see a DD pop around the corner like that and you're already moving, try to maintain that movement because um, if, you're, if you try to reverse course, you lose all your, all your speed and then you rely on luck. Um, when you change, like if, if you're reversing like I was, when he pops around the corner, if you start accelerating, you rely on luck because you no longer have the speed to actively maneuver. You, rely, you hope that uh, by changing course, his torps won't hit you, but you can't be sure and you basically 
put all your eggs in the luck basket and you hope for the best. If you maintain your speed, you can actively maneuver and you can actively dodge as I did there. So I never stopped reversing when he popped around the corner, even though it made my movement fairly predictable, I still maintained enough speed that I could actively dodge any of the torpedoes. So keep that in mind. Sometimes stopping is not a bad, uh, or ch reversing course isn't a bad decision, but, oh, hello Ibuki. I saw this Ibuki turning on my minimap, so I switched from farming the Friri to fi quickly farming the Ibuki. USAP, as I mentioned, monstrously powerful, and this guy had, what, 20k, 19k health, it only takes me two volleys to completely delete him, and once he's deleted, I move back to working on this Friedrich de Grossa, who has, in between, it looks like, damage con, so I should be able to finish him off quite easily. In this case, I'm, of course, able to use my teammate Smokes. Not that, in this case, the smoke would, not having the smoke would have too big of an impact, um, because even if he shot me from that range, he would need a lot of good luck for the Friedrich Grossa to be able to kill me before I killed him. I would, however, take more damage than I wanted. Uh, this series of kills has given us a significant advantage. Once again, we saw that there were, uh, there were, there were both Minotaurs and DDs here, so I'm staying constantly angled, and because I'm constantly angled, I don't have too many issues dodging the incoming torpedoes. Minotaur turns away. And I stay, I stick with AP, hoping he will give me enough broadside. Here's, an, of course, an example of uh, the penetration angles that you can achieve in a Des Moines. This is something you will probably get mostly bounces in pretty much any other cruiser in this situation. But the Des Moines can still pretty consistently pen the Minotaur. I am getting a fair amount of bounces though, but I want to keep the steady DPM up. I could probably switch to HE and maybe get some fires, but since he's stuck... Uh, I'm gonna see which way he moves before I decide to switch ammo type. And since he's angling away and it seems like the um, the shipwreck has sunk, I switch to HE to finish him off. He doesn't pop any heal, which is what I expected, so I don't really need to burn him down anything any more than this. AP would probably kill him just as well. Now though, we're still down points. We're down to a 5 versus 4, we're still down points because of course the enemy has full capture control. However, since I've cleared my left flank, I have the, the great option of start pushing. I did mention the Des Moines need to open isn't a very good thing, but if you get angles like this one, it's worth pushing out. I of course use AP, I mentioned American AP is monstrously strong, and especially if you get broadsides, it doesn't matter if you're a battleship or cruiser or whatever, if you get broadsides, uh, the way you can punish them with AP is absolutely devastating, and this Missouri finds out. You noted by the way that as I came around the corner, I zoomed in and looked over the mountain to see which ways his guns were pointing. And that's very important because I wanted to be able to push full broadside all as deep as possible to get as flat of a broadside as possible. And only when he turned his guns and shot did I angle in. And I bounced his shells, most of the shells on my belt and I really took almost no damage. Here we have another fairly flat broadside. AP would be perfectly fine against a uh, battleship giving this much broadside. However, at these ranges, and by habit, I tend to use HE if a battleship has a lot of health. If it's a high tier battleship with a lot of health, I tend to use HE simply because um, I want to get those fires burning. Uh, fires are percentage based, which means of course that the bigger base health pool you have, the more damage they will deal. Um, it does take longer for a fire to take than it takes for raw AP to kill someone though, so that's why I only really use it if it's a very healthy battleship, like in this case. He instantly damage on the first fire, so I want two fires on him before I switch to AP, because two fires ticking is a lot of damage. Someone else starts a fire, so I switch to AP. I have the two fires I want, even if they're not mine, one is from, a, uh, from I think, the Roma or the Rune. It doesn't matter. I have two fires steadily ticking, so that means no matter what type of angling and dodging this guy does at this point, he's losing a lot of health because of the double fire permanently burning on him. But the raw damage of AP is, of course, significantly better. As you can see, I have absolutely no issues uh, penning him and just annihilating him. And now, this is, of course, not something... You shouldn't look at this and go, wow, this is such a great ship, this Salem. This is exactly what the Des Moines can do. And this is why I'm using it as a, as a Des Moines example. These are all things that you do in a Des Point. This Edinburgh, in, in uh, contrast to the minute, uh, in contrast to the Yamato that had 70k, only has 30k, so I don't bother using H at all. I use AP as as long as he's giving any sort of broadside. Only when he starts angling away, 
uh, do I switch to HE to start working on him. The Hipper shows himself, so obviously I want to kill him first, kill the low HP target, and I want to keep pushing and maintaining this angle I have, which basically forces a crossfire upon any enemies that I'm fighting. And um, what, what I was about to say, don't think uh, this is something special to the Salem. This is exactly like the Des Moines. Des Moines is a ship that has a ton of firepower, but terrible arcs, uh, because of the extremely slow shell velocity um, and pretty damn bad armor but in return it has these this massive firepower and the ability to launch volleys over any cover and that means of course that the, De that the Des Moines has a massive amount of potential the better you are at the game the better you probably are at the Des Moines because this, I wouldn't call the Des Moines an easy ship to play. It is pretty damn challenging, especially finding the correct positions can be extremely difficult. But uh, if you master the Des Moines, you probably have a fairly good time in most of the cruisers in the game. Because uh, the Des Moines is far less forgiving than many of them. Simply because uh, it has such a large citadel and it has such little armor that it tends and it really has no troll turtle bike underwater citadel any of those um, if you get broadside in it you pretty much always get citadel so the des moines is a harsh lesson but if you learn it it will help you with all other cruisers the game does end um 600 and something k credits not really that special but then again i don't think we're getting the premium effects yet damage is of course actually really good for a demon type of ship uh, 272,000 damage six kills only two citadels and only nine fires i actually had really bad fire rng in this game um which was pretty unfortunate since i think i could have broken 300,000 damage if rng would have been a bit more favorable but you can't have it all and that's a bit unfortunate uh, if we look at the detailed report, you note that uh, almost 3,000. Sadly, once again, a bit more better fire RNG perhaps, and I could have probably broken 3k fairly easily. But considering at one point this game was 200 points versus 750 points, and we were down 8 versus 12, um, I will happily take this result. Uh, in fact, if we look at detailed report, you note that 265 HE hits, but only nine fires. So obviously the fire chance was absolutely abysmal this game. And the Des Moines has a fairly good fire chance. So especially since I'm running Demolition Expert on my captain. So this kind of terrible fire chance is less than ideal. Regardless though, a fairly even split between HE and AP damage, which is pretty common. The fires, of course, usually tend to favor HE, especially if you fight a lot of battleships that stay angled or kite away or whatever. HE tends to be more efficient. But the AP is monstrous, as I mentioned, and you should use both at all times. Anyway, not too much spotting damage this game because they didn't really have uh, too many DDs. And the Minotaur, the one time we actually got to fight him, he was in the open, not in any sort of cover. Regardless, let me show you guys my recommended build for the Salem, since it's also my recommended build for the Des Moines. Since I haven't actually featured the Des Moines in pretty much half a year, um, this is a good, a good Des Moines gameplay example, even if it happens to have a different name as of right now. Right, as usual, I will start with the modules. Not much to talk about here. You run premium uh, damage control, premium heal, premium radar, premium defensive AA, probably in that order. Upgrade-wise, exactly the same as you would run on Des Moines, main armaments mod 1, followed by if you have a radar module on the Des Moines for example, I run the radar module. Uh, if you don't have one to spare, run the defensive AA module. If you don't have a defensive AA module to spare, then run damage control, additional tankiness. AA range, faster rudder shift, uh, additional concealment, and an additional gun range. Uh, followed up with Captain Build, which is of course my dem I use Steven Siegel. The reason for using Steven Siegel is of course the greatly improved expert loader, which means on a Des Moines you can switch ammo type in one second, as you saw me do a couple of times throughout the vid. It's extremely powerful. The order priority is uh, uh, priority target, followed by adrenaline rush, followed by superintendent, additional radar, additional heal, additional defensive AA, extremely strong. Concealment Expert. That's the basic 10-point build. Uh, follow it up with improving your AA range, improving your fire chance, even though my RNG wasn't very favorable. Then build into Expert Loader and finally additional uh, reduction of uh, module incapacitation. And that is the basic 
uh, tier 10 Des Moines slash Salem build that I've been running for a long time that I really enjoy. For Clan Wars, of course, um, I wouldn't be using AFT. For Clan Wars, I'd probably switch to Basics of Survivability and possibly Jack of All Trades instead as the two-pointer, but uh, we'll see about that one. AFT is of course completely pointless though, but I think something like basic survivability to reduce the fires is pretty much a must-have on any sort of nose-in uh, type of tanky cruiser. Um, Flag-wise, priority number one is of course additional healing. Uh, I like the faster consumable cooldowns, I like the speed, I like the fire chance. Um, if it was Clan Wars, I would also run uh, Detonation Flag, of course, and probably Reduction in Fires as well, because every tank, every bit of tankiness helps in Clan Wars. But for randoms like this, I just run basic XP flags, since I don't really care too much. The camo of the Salem is, I'd say, pretty cool looking. I mean, it's, it's not a bad looking camo. It actually looks pretty nice. Actually, a pretty damn nice looking ship. I don't mind the camo at all. But uh, the bonuses aren't really that special. I mean, 50%. If you compare it to Des Moines premium camo, the bonuses are significantly better. But I mean, if it is a premium, it will still have better better innate bonuses. Um, but we'll see what they decide on that. I'll have to return to the ship once they do all the changes, because obviously um, the ship, the way you play it, or the impact you have will probably change significantly once you get that better heal since a better heal will allow for more aggression, which makes for a pretty interesting ship. But right now I pretty much use this uh, Salem commentary as an example of Des Moines gameplay, because, well, the Salem is going to change anyway, and as of right now it's basically just a clone of the Des Moines, so anything you do in the Salem, you can do in the Des Moines, and which makes it a very good example of how to play the Des Moines. Anyway, that was all for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it.